May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be as pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So there is a joke. This young girl is in Sunday school. And she's bent over and she's drawing. So the Sunday school teacher comes to her and says, You know, so you tell her, what are you drawing? I'm drawing God. But no one really knows what God looks like. They will when I'm done. <laughs> We've all been there. Um, so now, now when we picture a young child drawing God, there are certain characteristics that we imagine they include. A beard, usually, I think. Uh, an older person wearing a white robe, maybe some clouds, harps, angels, those sorts of things. It's the clouds I want to focus on. You see, when we think of God, we often think of God in heaven, and when we're young, we draw heaven as being in the clouds. I mean, we know it's not, because otherwise... Flying aeroplanes would be a challenging thing. We know it's not, although we still use the language of up, don't we? Now, that's fine if you're a young child drawing a picture of God. It's less fine when we use that picture to create or support our theology of heaven and God. Isaiah is revealing his vision. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah is not talking about that place where we go when we die with God. Isaiah is of a, of a, of a worldview that the earth is basically like a saucer, and uh, the heavens are a dome, and the stars are on the outside. So he's talking about, let's replace that with a new one. But an upgrade. That's his picture. And he goes into it to quite some detail, in a sense. In New Jerusalem, delight, joy. Never again will there be an infant who lives for a few days, or an old man that doesn't live out his years. Someone who dies at a hundred will be thought just a child. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Isaiah's picture of heaven is earth upgraded. Or perhaps I should say earth purified by God. It's not some sort of spiritual floating around in clouds with a harp and wings and learning to play musical instruments in heaven. It's real, it's grounded, it is practical. And the great shame of it, the great pain and the great challenge of it is, we haven't got there yet, have we? These are still issues in the world today. There are still children who die too young. There are still people who don't have a home. And it's not that they don't have a home because they're bone idle and can't be bothered to do anything about it. They don't have a home because someone bombed it. Or they don't have a home because their entire country has been pillaged of anything of value and all they have is dust and dirt. They don't have a home because they had to run away. They don't have vineyards because they were burnt and destroyed. That's the challenge and the pain of this vision. 
the good news in it, though, is that there are places where we've made it. You know, if you think about it, very few of us have to worry that some soldier is going to come in the middle of the night and turf us out of our homes. Very few of us have to worry about people destroying our crops. So here's the thing. Why no, we can do it. We can create heaven on earth. And I know we can do it because we've done it some places. But as we continue to go through that passage, we get to the end. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. And the first time I remember looking at that, I was thinking, surely that's sort of metaphoric language. Surely Isaiah is talking about two opposing nations making peace. But I think not. I don't think this is a metaphor. It's not that Isaiah is afraid of metaphors, I just don't think that's what he's doing here. What Isaiah is doing is he's saying, if you've just made it in a few places, you haven't made it. If the lion has plenty of food, and the lamb is the food, you haven't made it. So that's the challenge. If it's just here, and not anywhere, everywhere, then we're not there. The good news in this, of course, is that it's not a journey we undertake on our own. It's not a journey that we take by ourselves. Isaiah set us this vision, this is what it could look like, people, go and do it. Rather, we undertake this journey with God. This is not something we are alone. We do this so that all of creation might know and experience the love and presence of God in their daily lives. That's the great gift of this. Not that it's going to be done instantaneously. That would be nice. Wouldn't it be? We could just wake up tomorrow morning and everything's fine. The entire world over. That'd be nice. I feel like a beauty queen when I say that. I want world peace, God. I do. <laughs> I do. It's something we work towards as the people of God. To make real, to make present the vision of God that was granted to Isaiah so long ago. That's the challenge and the blessing of heaven. So that in the future, a time will come when little children drawing pictures of God don't draw God in the clouds. They draw God in our homes and in our hearts. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.